there's a perception that natural sugar alternatives like honey are healthier than table sugar because they're less processed and because simply they're considered to be more natural. And a question I hear really frequently is, if I use honey or maple syrup or any of these other natural sugar alternatives in my cooking or my baking, does it mean it's healthier? So before we talk about those alternatives, can we actually maybe start with the beginning of that question, which is, isn't table sugar itself natural? Well, it depends what you term natural. Yes, it's made from sugar cane, which is a plant. And once the cane is harvested, it's crushed to extract its juice. Then the sugar cane juice is boiled until the water evaporates, leaving behind the sugar crystals. Could you just explain a bit how exactly natural sugar alternatives are different from, from table sugar and ex explain a bit what's going on there? Yeah, so let's first look at what table sugar is. So table sugar is sucrose, and this is a disaccharide, which means it's made up of two sugars bound together, hence where the word disaccharide comes from, di meaning two and saccharide meaning, saccharide meaning sugar. And the two sugars that are bound together in sucrose are glucose and fructose. So are natural alternatives to sugar also made up of glucose and fructose stuck together to make sucrose? Yeah, so typically most natural alternatives to sugar are made up of fructose and glucose. Sometimes the ratios of the fructose to glucose in these natural sugars might be different. So for example, in Robinia honey, it contains more fructose and glucose. And there's also other more complex sugars found in honey, but actually in quite low concentrations. So to make sure I've got this right, Sarah, you're saying the basic contents of sugar and these natural sugar alternatives are essentially almost the same. They've got glucose and fructose inside them. Um, but in fact, I think that they can taste quite different to us. What's, what's going on there? Yeah, so many of the natural sugar alternatives sometimes taste sweeter, but they're also slightly different from table sugar in that they often contain extra micronutrients. So for example, honey contains some vitamins, minerals, and polyphenols. Although it's important to say these are quite in quite small amounts. So Sarah, could you just explain very simply like what happens when I eat some, you know, a spoonful of sugar or dissolved in my coffee? What, what happens to my body and how does that affect my health? So firstly, what happens is you have sweet taste receptors in your mouth that say, Jonathan, this tastes super yummy. I want more. Um, and then secondly, what happens is um, the sugar enters your intestine and it enters your bloodstream and it's broken into fructose and into glucose. Now the fructose is transported directly to your liver where it's either converted into glucose or if it's a very high amount might be converted into fat. So the glucose is uh, transported in your blood and we often refer to this as blood sugar. So when we talk about blood sugar, we often mean the glucose that's circulating in your blood. Now, what happens is, is when you consume sugar, then you have this quite rapid peak in circulating blood sugar or circulating blood glucose that peaks at around 15 minutes after consuming the sugar and returns to baseline around two hours. And where this becomes a problem is we know that if it's excessive in terms of the size of the peak, then you can actually have unfavorable downstream effects. So it can initiate inflammation, for example. Now, this is a normal physiological response to consuming sugar, but it's when it's excessive and repeated um, over a long period of time that we believe it has an unfavorable effect on health. But what we've also found that's really interesting from our work, Jonathan, is that some people have dips after they have too much sugar. And so what happens is, is they have a dip in the circulating level of blood glucose, blood sugar. And this is unfavorable because people that have these dips tend to feel really hungry quite quickly. They tend to feel less alert um, and they actually consume a lot more energy at their next meal. So nearly about 300 calories more over a day compared to if they don't experience dips. You eat one thing, right? This sucrose and very rapidly your body is breaking it down into those component parts, the, the glucose and, and the, the fructose, as you, as you said. Is that 
similar as we go and think about, you know, honey, for example. So people are asking, like, is honey better than me? It certainly seems, you know, more natural in the sense that um, there wasn't any of that processing. Our ancestors have probably been eating it for millions of years. Is is honey therefore going to be better for my health? So honey contains fructose. It contains uh, glucose, just like table sugar does. So it's metabolized in just the same way. So it causes just the same metabolic effects in our body. And so if honey is going to have a pretty similar effect to table sugar, so it sounds like you're not saying it's a dramatically better alternative with very different um, health outcomes. What about the stevia that you were talking about earlier? Stevia is really much more like an artificial sweetener. So as I said earlier, though, a lot of stevia products also contain erythritol, which is a sugar alcohol. And there was a recent study in Nature Medicine that found links between erythritol and a higher risk of cardiovascular disease and stroke and heart attack. But this study did have really lots of limitations. So we need to study this a lot more before we draw any conclusions about the health effects of erythritol. We do know from what research has been published around artificial sweeteners that they seem to unfavorably impact our overall blood sugar control and they seem to unfavorably impact our gut microbiome. But I do think it's an area that we need more research before we can say it's safe to swap sugar for sweeteners or we shouldn't consume sweeteners at all. And so what about agave syrup? That's something else that I feel I, I see all the time in sort of healthy recipes where that's been used as an alternative to table sugar um, within the, uh, the recipe. Yeah. And again, I think that's because people say it's natural. They say it's a good source of minerals, vitamins and polyphenols compared to some other natural sugar alternatives or compared to table sugar. But the type of agave syrup that most of us are now likely to buy in the store is typically really quite highly refined. And so this is more likely to have less of these heart healthy polyphenols than the unrefined agave syrup or even maybe than maple syrup. And what about the, the effect of agave on our blood sugar levels? Well, the body processes agave slightly differently to table sugar. And this is because agave is...